animal pattern champions. And when you say six lucky, we're talking six amateurs. Six amateur league bowlers from certified sport leagues uh, will be there, and they're going to get a chance to bowl against your stars from the PBA. I still remember that great follow through, that skinny kid from St. Louis <laughs> winning that master. Steve, that was that was uh, that was quite a victory. You had three tour titles, including that one major. That was that was pretty exciting to watch. It was awesome. Stick around and join us here for the first part of this match as Ryan Simonelli begins versus Walter Ray Williams Jr. Simonelli opened up his match with Mike Scroggins with a four bagger, and he continues to start strong with a strike here in the first. The Lumber Liquidators PBA Tours all-time titles leader, six-time PBA Player of the Year, and the 2004 USBC Masters Champion from Ocala, Florida. Please welcome Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Heading into this week, Walter Ray was third in earnings. He'll be either number one or number two by the end of the day. He led the tour in average and points, and we mentioned the winner of today's tournament will vault to the top of the Player of the Year points list. Walter Ray already in third place. Steve, you and Walter Ray are about the same age, aren't you? <laughs> yes, we are. Your thoughts on, at age 50, Walter Ray performing at this level? Well, it's amazing to me. Uh, it, there's so many components to being good out here. There's the physical game. you got to stay healthy all those years. But in addition to that, you have to have passion for the game that never ends because to practice and stay up with these young kids year after year like he does, I, I can't even imagine how he's doing it. And if he were to win today, he would vault himself to the top of the player of the year race, as would Ryan Seminelli and Chris Barnes. So it's it just truly amazing that he's able to do what he can do at age 50. And I promise you, coming into this match, he watched what Ryan Simonelli did. He knows that Ryan Simonelli did not miss the pocket in the last match. And Walter Ray right now, his mindset is, I better throw a lot of strikes to win this match. No doubt about it, and he's certainly capable of it. Uh, watching him over the years, I don't know if there's ever been a more accurate player. I would say that Walter and Earl would probably be the two most accurate players in history, and uh, I guess the records show it. Southpaw leaves the seven pin. He did that twice in his first match versus Mike Scroggins. And here he does it in the second frame. And remember, he did miss that seven pin in the ninth frame to give Mike Scroggins a glimmer of hope. But then he struck out in the tenth to close the match. Yeah. Steve was talking about the upcoming PBA Experience Showdown coming away from the brand new USBC facility in Arlington, Texas. Here are the, the pros that are going. The Ripper, Devaney, Bill O'Neill, Rhino Page, and Norm Duke will be there to take on one lucky or unlucky <laughs> amateur. The Ripper. You couldn't, you couldn't wait to, to say Jack Jerk's nickname, could you? Late kick of the 10, Simonelli back on the strike. Plane. I just want to make sure Jack's buddies, late kick of the 7, Jerk's buddies still still like us. Oh, they, you kidding? All you had to do was say the Ripper, and you had fans for life in Buffalo. Up, up steps Walter Ray Williams Jr. Struck in the first and the second. This is his 171st telecast. Took a lot. 10 pinned as Walter Ray. You see ah. the amateur finalists scrolling down there at the bottom of the uh, screen. These yeah. competitors yeah, yes. flying. Fans uh, can go to bowl.com and pick out uh, their six favorite bowlers. There's three bowlers from each of the different oil patterns, the five animal patterns and another. And uh, you fans out there can go on to bowl.com and pick which ones from each of those categories that you think should be going against these stars. Well, I saw several women on the scroll as well. That's right. Like I said, every everybody bowling in a certified sport league had a chance for this, and it was the bowler who was the high scratch series in their league that week. His name went into the pile, and we had over 1,300 names submitted. Seven and 
10 drop late for Walter Ray. Strikes in the first, second, and fourth. I've seen him do that quite a few times where, I mean, you or I, Steve, would have left the, the flattest Ooh. 10 pin, and Walter Ray somehow gets the six to go to the sidewall and just kind of tomahawk the 10 down. Just truly amazing. Really, he's a testament to the, the fact that accuracy and uh, uh, just the ability to put the ball in the pocket on a regular basis is enough to be competitive out here. All these guys with, you know, twice as many reps as him, and he's still kicking their rear end, so. Hey, Ryan, what has changed with the lanes from your first match to now versus Walter Ray? Uh, there's a little bit of carry down. Um, I'm a little bit worried that that ball's going to start ringing because that's what your thing does. It just starts up early. It doesn't really finish. Uh, I got a ball to go to, though, so we'll see. And what he means by that is he's starting to push oil down the lane, which is making his ball go just a little bit longer down the lane before it starts to face the one-two pocket. And the ringers he's referring to is the seven pins. And in two games, that's all he's left. It's been nothing but strikes and three ringing sevens. Crushes the pocket there, does the Italian stallion, Ryan Simonelli. Wait a minute, I thought that was Sylvester Stallone. Rocky. It hasn't been trademarked. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll throw it out to anybody there. I got gotcha. you. Hit him thin and watch him spin. Steve Wonderlick and I made a fortune on tour throwing shots like that. <laughs> a few less revs than Ryan has. Yeah, just a few. WRWJ with a strike of his own in the fifth here in match number two. Walter Ray on a bit of a hot streak. He finished runner-up to Michael Fagan just two weeks ago at the Dick Weber Open in Fountain Valley. Won a tournament, actually the first tournament of the year, the Motor City, Motor City Open. Where the Motor beat, City Open. Where he beat Chris Barnes, who he's hoping to see again later today. See him leaving the nine too often. Well, he he doesn't because again he's not a big high rev power guy. But Steve, that, that's that solid nine for Walter Ray's got to be all angle, no? Yep, he's bringing it in from the very far extreme edge, and uh, so he gets some of the angle that these higher rev players would normally be getting, and you're going to leave some of the same kind of spares. Clean here in match number two. Steve Warner, thank you. Thanks thank for you. joining us. Look forward to seeing you in Arlington. Thanks for having me. We look forward to having you down to the International Training and Research Center. You guys are going to be very excited about what you see. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, I'm, looking, Steve. I'm looking forward to some knowledge from you guys to help my game.